Hello everyone, uh, this is Duygu from Sabancı University Nanotechnology Research and Application Center. Uh, today we are uh, with Dr. Bashir from Kaduna State University from Nigeria. Uh, he will talk about sonochemical methods. Uh, Dr. Bashir, uh, here's your turn. Uh, thanks for your our kind invitation and uh, I'll give the floor to the Dr. Bashir. Thank you. Yeah. Good morning, everyone. Today, I'll be presenting um, a unique method titled Sonic um, Sonochemical Technique, an effective, facile, and rapid method for surface engineering and modification of nanomaterial. Um, but before going to my slide, let me briefly um, I'm a senior lecturer in the Department of Physics at North State University, Nigeria. And I had my first degree in Bayero University, Kano, in um, 2003. And I did my master's in University Science, Malaysia, master's in medical physics in 2012. And within record short of time, I had my PhD within record short of time of two years from STEM University, University of Science Malaysia, between 2013 and 2015. And in 2017, I returned to Nigeria to join Kaduna State University as a senior lecturer in the Department of Physics. Today, I will be presenting sonochemical technique. This is a technique that throughout my PhD um, in the University of Science Malaysia, we developed in um, the technique towards using it to engineer or modify surface of nanomaterial. The, the outline of my presentation goes thus. And first and foremost, why do we have to do to, 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 to engineer or modify surface of material? Basically, for several advanced applications. Surface of materials or surface of nanomaterials are modified for several applications, which include self-cleaning surfaces. That, that is for materials that they, they self-clean themselves. In that situation, you have to modify the surface of the material for that purpose, especially, I mean, like a smart material. For antibiotic fooling, antibacterial purpose, we also modify the surface of nanomaterial for such application for super hydrophobic. If you intend to make your nanomaterial not just to be hydrophobic, but you want it to be super hydrophobic. In that regard, also you have to modify the surface of the nano of the material. For packaging applications, nowadays we have so many um, so many materials where you, you for packaging based on the application well, on the packaging. Perhaps you don't want sunlight to get into, your, into the substance, you have to modify the surface of the packet to prevent, um, to, for the packet to serve your purpose. Nowadays, we have so many nanomaterials in packaging. Also, for sensor, for sensing application, mostly nanomaterials for, all, for, for several sensors now, nano sensors, we have so many uh, nanomaterials now in sensing. And for the sensing application, you need a precise targeting material on the surface of your of, your, of the nanomaterial that will that will do the targeting and, and, and the sense and, and perform the sensing property. In that regard, also you have to, to, to engineer or modify the surface of nanomaterial for, for that application. And also for biomedical applications, especially in biomedical applications, you need your nanomaterial to be biocompatible. To, to be stable. I mean, in this regard, this, you have to determine, you have to be sure that the surface of your nanomaterial is, 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 is intact to, to perform those applications for nanocatalysts, for catalysis or, or photonics. There are so many applications that require the surface of the nanomaterial to be um, modified. However, in literature, there are several top-down or bottom-up process that you can see in literature that have been used in modifying the surface of nanomaterial for several 
applications that, as I mentioned earlier. But here in between, this is a, this is the work we want to present. What we've done in the lab of my um, of Professor Azan Abdelaziz in University of Science Malaysia. This works are what we've done between 2013 till date in trying to establish the use of sonochemical method in modifying surface of nanomaterial, and not just to modify, to use the chemical method to modify surface of nanomaterial, but also to show that the chemical method is effective method, is facile and rapid method of modifying the surface of nanomaterial. Basically, when we talk about um, sonic chemistry, what is sonic chemistry? What's sonic chemical method? Ultrasound generally exists in the sound frequency. You know, we all know what, what sound is. Between 16 to 18 hertz, this is a normal sound that we can hear, that human beings can hear. And conventional sonic chemistry is a sound between 20 to 100 kilohertz. This is, a, this is a frequency much lower than the, the frequency in the, in the, um, in the medical range. It's quite, it's quite lower to the frequency in the medical range. This is, um, beside, you can see the picture of a, an ultrasonic device that we use in doing all, all the work. I'm sure virtually in every nanomaterial lab, this device is always there, but we do use it for different applications. But we we have we use it specifically we, in our lab. We use ultrasound for so many things. But here I'm just trying to present what we've done and how we have used ultrasound to modify the surface of nanomaterial. What is the dynamics of sonic chemistry that makes the use of it so facile, so effective, and rapid? Ultrasonic um, sonic chemistry occur basically um, by a process we call acoustic cavitation process. What is acoustic cavitation? This is when you sonicate liquid. There is always formation of bubble. This bubble grows to the extent that when it grows, it busted. And when that happens, it, uh, that process is what we call acoustic cavitation process. At that point, the temperature of the of the of the of the explosion is more than five thousand Kelvin, and the pressure generated by this explosion of the of, of the bubble is also is more than one thousand atmospheric pressure, and the cooling rate is so rapid. This basically this condition. I mean allows, due to this extraordinary heating, pressure, and cooling rate of the cavitation process, ultrasound can generate unusual high energy chemistry. I repeat, due to that condition, the 1,000, the 5,000 Kelvin, the heat is so enormous, that heat allows ultrasound to generate what unusual high chemistry, which can increase reactivity in manifold which can increase reactivity beyond our expectation. And the, 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 the chemical effect of ultrasound falls in three areas, homogeneous of the chemistry, heterogeneous of the chemistry, which is between liquid to liquid. And, but here we are trying to now show how ultrasound could be used uniquely for modifying the surface of nanomaterial. People in the literature, people have used ultrasound for so many things in terms of synthesizing, um, synthesizing nanomaterials and, and do all that thing. But the, the specifically, we are trying to present how we have used ultrasound to modify the surface of nanomaterial. And to do that, we are going to, to present some of the, 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 the some of our works that we've published to establish that. So the chemistry is, a, is an effective method that we can be used to modify surface of unknown material. We are um, first on the list here in this paper. In, uh, um, in uh, one of our MSc students of Aslan and with myself, we use ultrasound, we use sonic chemical method 
to coat, to grow nano rod, zinc oxide nano rod on different metal um, wire. We, 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 grow, we grew zinc oxide nano rod on wire such as silver, copper, tungsten, and, 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 and you know, we, we, we grew different wire, different wire. And how do we know that those wires grew, successfully grow with ultrasound on the wire? As you can see from this slide, these are the SEM, SEM images of deep oxide nanorod that were grown on silver wire, nickel wire, copper wire, and tungsten wire at different concentrations. Figure A, B, C, and D, what is, um, this is C and D. The figure A, B, C shows I mean, a different wire. In figure A, in A is silver, where zinc oxide nanorod are grown on the sea, on silver, as you can see. And one, two, three, where we send different concentration, where zinc oxide nanorod were grown on the on the on, 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 on silver wire. Here yeah, it will interest you to know that in literature. We are the first to establish how to use some chemical method to go zinc oxide nanorod on the wire. And in, 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 in the second wire, which is nickel, we also, I mean, under the same condition, we go different wires and um, different zinc oxide nanorod on the wire. And C on copper wire. These are, these are the zinc oxide gold on copper wire, and indeed these are zinc oxide nanorod gold on, on tungsten. But under the same condition, we realize that we have effective growth in tungsten nanowire. This is here in this slide, summarily, that is the SEM image of where I mean the nucleation, the process, how ultrasound allows the nucleation of the zinc oxide nanorod to go on the wire. And this is a SEM image showing the hexagonal shape of the zinc oxide nanorod that we go on the wire. And basically, there is summarily in this work, as I said earlier, we, 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 we try to show how ultrasound, also the chemical method, could be used to grow nanorod on wire effectively how we, we, we modify the surface of the wire you know for for, for sensing application therein some chemical was used to grow zinc oxide on the wire for this for sensing application and by so doing we've used ultrasound to modify the surface of the wire the next paper I want to present is how we also use the unique condition generated by ultrasound, by, by, by ultrasound to incorporate one nanomaterial into another nanomaterial. By so doing, we change the surface of the nanomaterial. Iron oxide, superparamagnetic iron oxide nanoparticle, is well known for, for, for several applications, including biomedical application, environmental remediation. But basically, due to the high surface energy of iron oxide nanoparticle, it tends to agglomerate easily. And for biomedical application, the surface of iron oxide needs to be um, modified. Several papers, several work have shown how the surface of iron oxide nanoparticle is modified with silica and other bioorganic um, biocompatible material. But here in, we, after understanding the unique condition from solar chemistry, one of the one of the one of the one of the on, on, on one of the unique condition generated by ultrasound is high energy or high velocity shock wave, which can generate collision between particles. In chemistry, for chemical reaction to, 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 to have effective chemical reaction. So many things, we, there will be collision between um, the, 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 the content. But here, we, we use ultrasound to collide both iron oxide nanoparticle and silica nanoparticle, and eventually we, put, we, we, we incorporate iron oxide nanoparticle into silica nanoparticle in order to, to, to modify the surface of 
iron of that nanoparticle. How do we do that? Here, this slide, as, as, as likely established in the work of um, Pope Sussilis, who shows that when you have interparticle inter collision, this is a, this TEM image of silicon nanoparticle. Figure A shows silicon nanoparticle before coll collision with um, with ultrasound. In figure A, silicon nanoparticle synthesized by the renowned Stober method. From the image, we can see that the particles are highly stable. But figure B, when the particles undergo um, uh, 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 when the particles were twisted with sonic um, with ultrasound, when the particles were, 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 were collided with, with ultrasound, we found that the particles fuse together, they melt together, and this is in accordance with what um, the work of Prosusulis established that when you when you have interparticle collision with ultrasound, the particles tend to collide, melt, and fuse together. But this here in we now try after understanding this dynamic of ultrasound, we try to now collide superparamagnetic ion oxide nanoparticle with silica nanoparticle. And eventually, when the superparamagnetic ion oxide nanoparticles was collided with silica nanoparticle, we found that the ion oxide it embedded into the silica particle. And that, that's what we are seeing in TEM image of figure C. And for this to happen, the two nanoparticles, the silicon silica nanoparticles and the superparamagnetic ion oxide nanoparticles were, were found to be, well, after, after synthesizing them, and we established that they are highly stable. We used, with the head of ultrasound, we were able to incorporate superparamagnetic ion oxide nanoparticles into silicon nanoparticles to form this new nanoparticle where we've modified the surface of the iron oxide effectively. And iron oxide were now found inside the silica. How do we know that the iron oxide is now embedded in the silica? We did the, the we did a, a mapping, electronic spectroscopy imaging of the new image. And we found that the, the uh, we found that when we did the mapping, the electronic spectroscopy imaging of our of 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 of, figure of the of the new particles that were found. We found that here is an ion map, and this is oxygen map, and this is silicon map. This mapping shows that all from the mapping we can see that all the elements, the ion, the oxygen, and the silicon, occupy the same shape, the same position. This this which shows that the ion oxide nanoparticle has embedded into the silicon nanoparticle. And this is what we have. And that is why we have it. What am I trying to say here? In our lab, we try to show that one of the unique conditions generated by, by um, ultrasonic irradiation of, of, of liquid is that the liquid content collides with each other. Unlike in the work of Kopsusulis, we show that when you have inter interparticle collision, the particle tends to fuse together. Like I show here, when you have interparticle collision, the particle fuses together to form this. But here we now show, contrary to what the work of Kopsusulis, we show that when you have intraparticle collision of stable nanomaterial, the, 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 there is any possibility due to inelastic collision of the particles to have one of the particles embedded into the other. And in this case now, we use what, the, the, what we put the, um, the, the hypothesis to now embed or incorporate iron oxide nanoparticle into silica nanoparticle. And as you can see, we established that the, the, the iron oxide nanoparticle are successfully incorporated into silica. And the silica, the size is 50 nanometer, while the size of the iron oxide nanoparticle is 10 nanometer. And that, that was one of the reasons why the iron oxide was able to, to embed into the silicon nanoparticle at under stable um, collider, under um, stable collider condition. Now that was why the iron oxide nanoparticle were incorporated into silica. Therein, 
we establish some that we can also use on the chemical method to modify the surface of nanomaterial or when you want to form composite nanomaterial, when you want to, 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 to incorporate one nanomaterial into another for several applications like catalysis. Because silica is a porous nanomaterial. And based on the porosity, you can incorporate nanomaterial into it, into the pores of the silica for several applications like catalysis um, or, or, as, um, or for biomedical application. Precisely, we developed this um, oxide in this work to use the iron oxide and contrast agent to MRI. But how do we, under this condition, what happened to the, to the other properties of the iron oxide and the silica? We did other analysis to show that the, 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 the crystalline nature of the iron oxide nanoparticle is intact. As you can see from this image, the, the image, the, the SRV structure shows how, I mean, the peaks of both the iron oxide nanoparticle and the amorphous nature of the silica in the, in, 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 the, in uh, uh, the, the, this bulb, this is the, this is the, this is the original image of the bare iron oxide nanoparticle before incorporating it into silica. And from here, after incorporating it to silica, the presence of the silica in the nanomaterial in the composite can be seen by this bulb here. And this shows the presence of the silica. And when we try to, to increase the solication period, we also see that, that it, um, the period did not even, the, the, the iron oxide did not, is it perfectly incorporated in, into the silica, and that's what we can see here. And how about the, the, the saturation magnetization of the iron oxide? We find that despite that the iron oxide was incorporated into, into silica, still the, the, the magnetic property of the iron oxide nanoparticle is enhanced and is intact. Here, in this work, we show from our lab, from the lab of Axel Abdelaziz in University of Science Malaysia, we are able to show that so, um, one of the, the unique conditions of ultrasound can be used to, to incorporate different nan one nanomaterial into another nanomaterial, depending on the type of application we, we, we want to use the work. And then, successfully, we've also modified the surface of iron oxide nanoparticles. Let me show another work of ours where we use ultrasound to modify surface of nanoparticles. Here also, this is another unique condition, con uh, unique publication where we use hot water to functionalize, to coat, where we use hot water to functionalize or to coat the surface of superparamagnetic ion iron oxide nanoparticles with organometallic material, with organic material, to show that despite the huge temperature of hot water, we can still use it to functionalize nano um, bio, bio, to bio organic materials on the surface of iron of any material, not just iron oxide, but on on any on any nanomaterial. What how do we do this? As, we, as I said, when you have nanomaterial and you, you, you mix it with organomet or you, the, the, the material you want to functionalize or you want to put on the surface of your nanomaterial and you sonicate all the, um, the mixture, we found that the organic, organic material would effectively functionalize or bind or graft on the surface of the nanomaterial. And this is what we show here. And how do we know that the, the organometallic material are successfully grown on the iron oxide. We did so many characterizations to establish this. And one of it is we, we, we use XPS, that is to, to determine the surface of the iron oxide. Electronic spectroscopy, we use XPS um, to determine all the elements on the surface of the iron oxide. As we can see, the various band that shows that the silicon, the carbon, the nitrogen from the ectase, from the um, um, organometallic material, successfully bind on the iron oxide. All the peaks here shows 
the, the various elements that binds on the iron oxide nanomaterial. As we can show here, this, this shows the various elements present in, 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 in our sample. The amount of iron, the oxygen, the nitrogen, the carbon, and the silicon that is present in the sample. Here, also, as I say, this work shows this work shows that um, ultrasound, also in the chemistry, can be used effectively to coat the surface of iron oxide nanomaterial for catalysis application, biomedical application, environmental remediation, depending on the type of application we want to do. Then, to show, this is the TEM image of, of the sample, which shows that the sample is well stable. Not only stable, there is no agglomeration. And also, importantly, um, the method shows we, 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 the, the magnetization of the particle is 77.7 EMU per gram, which shows that, unlike compared to what is represented in literature by other methods, the, the material has enhanced magnetization. And this, this is one of the unique conditions of um, one of the one of the advantages of using ultrasound for surface modification. At this junction, in order to now see how facile, how effective, how rapid so the chemical method is, we try to now see looking at the, 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 the huge temperature of ultrasonic method or um, the, the, the huge temperature from the ultrasound. How far, how rapid can we really grow or can we really functionalize or graph organometallic material on nanomaterial? We are able to now show in this work that in one minute, I, I, I repeat, in one minute, organometallic material or functional group can be functionalized on nanomaterial by some chemical method. That is, Unlike, unlike all the methods reported in literature, in, our, in, the, in the lab, we are able to show that in one minute, we can have effective functionalization or effective surface modification of nanomaterial. And that is why I said from the title of this presentation that we are trying to show how effective, how fast and rapid this work precisely shows how rapid so the chemical method could be of modifying the surface of nanomaterial because in one minute we are able to show that nanomaterial can be on the surface of nanomaterial can be modified in one minute and let me quickly go take us through what we did as i, I reported in the earlier work how we modify the surface of iron oxide nanoparticles with a minus line organometallic compound and not just only modify the surface of the iron oxide but also to show that so the chemical method is a rapid method where in one minute we can modify the surface of the iron oxide nanoparticle. These are the XPS image where we combine, we compare different um, fornication period. The A is a sample prepared in one minute. The B is a sample that were prepared in 10 minutes. The C are samples that were prepared in 20 minutes. As you can see from the, from the, from the spectra, all the samples occupy, I mean, they, they, they appear, they absorb the, the, at the same band, showing that there is no variation using one minute, 10 minutes, 20 minutes, one hour, or what have you to prepare to functionalize organometallic material or nanomaterial. And there and there, we concluded that so the chemical method is an effective method that can permit us to modify the surface of nanomaterial in one minute. This shows that it saves energy, it saves time, and it's not laborious. And not only that, not only that in one minute, but 
all all all, all the, um, the the property the characteristic of the of the manual materials are not affected and that is one of the things we are able to show here that even when we make, when we compare the various elements present in the video in the, in the different samples prepared under the set, under different conditions we can see that in one minute the amount of iron the, from the iron oxide the, con, um, the atomic concentration is is 34. When you compare to, to, to others, you can see that even the sample prepared in one minute has more iron, more oxygen I mean, compared to others. And there and then, there we are in one minute, the surface of iron oxide nanoparticle can be over. Then, how facile is our, is our method? How facile is sonochemical method? Not just in one minute. We also need to now show that how effective it is. Yes, in one minute, we can use ultrasound to coat or modify surface of nanomaterial. But how, how about the effectiveness of sonochemistry? Then, we went we, 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 we further our, um, with another public, uh, publication to show the effectiveness of ultrasound as a technique to modify surface of nanomaterial. In this work, we try to, to optimize sonochemistry in functionalizing same organometallic material on iron oxide nanoparticles. We opt how did we optimize? We use statistical tool, RSM, response service methodology, to optimize the various conditions, the ultrasonic condition, the amount of ultrasound, the amount of iron oxide to, to, opti up to the optimizing the amount of the organometallic, the amino select, to see if we, I mean, if we, we vary all these conditions. Can we see how, how effective is, um, is the ultrasonic method to modify the surface of the, the nanomaterial? There, we are able to see that in this paper, we are able to show that ultrasonic is not just rapid method to modify the surface of um, nanomaterial, but it is also an effective method to, 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 to modify the surface or to engineer the surface of nanomaterial. Let me quickly take us through some of the, the things we did in the work. There, here in the optimization, using um, RSM a statistical tool. What are the things we try to vary? We vary basically the sonic um, sonication period and the various amount of organometallic compound we use. In order to now test the response of how, the, how many iron oxide is going to be formed in the, in, 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 in the modification, how many nitrogen can we find in the, in, the, in the new compound, and how many oxygen can we find? We vary between one minute and between one minute and 20 minutes. As you can see here, the, the, the highest condition is 20 minutes, and the lowest is one minute. Here we want to, 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 to see how, how facile, how effective, the effectiveness of the sonochemical method in surface modification. And the, the, the statistical tools the, in the design of experiment, these are the various um, tables we have. And we, not, we are able to now see that when we, 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 we sonicate, we prepare, the, we modify the surface of the nanomaterial under this condition, we were able to see that the, the ultrasound did not in any way affect, but rather is an effective method to modify the surface of nanomaterial with organometallic compound. Here, these are some of the, the ANOVA, the, 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 the variation of the variables to now see the effect of the variables on, on, on the amount of iron, oxygen, and the silicon found in the compound, including the nitrogen. Here, we did not, here, from the sonication period, we can see that the amount, the sonication period increases also 
with the amount of agents used in the surface modification. But basically, we can we, we are able to see that the, the amount of ion increases because perhaps due to oxidation of ion 2 to ion 3. That is why we have increase of the, 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 the number of ions present in the sample. Here, we try to see the effect of the sonication time, the ultrasound, on the amount of organometallic compound that functionalized on the surface of the nanomaterial. And basically, to now see the number of nitrogen, which represent the, uh, the primary amino group, the primary amino, um, am, uh, amine group in the sample. And we were able to see that decrease in the sonication period, when we decrease the sonication time, we have increase in the amount of ethers that bind on the surface of the nanomaterial. What does this have? Hello again, everyone. Uh, you know that there's a connection problem, uh, connection issue. So we'll have to finish the presentation. If you have any questions, please uh, write to an email to us or we can uh, sunum at sabancayunum.edu. I can copy the email address one more again here. Uh, and we'll forward to your questions to Dr. Bashir. Thank you for your uh, your time and participation. See you again.